Hey guys, welcome to today's episode of Talking Decon. Thanks for joining us. And to my left here is Steve Wolf, our franchise business consultant. And to my right here is Kennedy, our social media coordinator. And you have a great case for us today. Yes, it's a very interesting and disturbing case at that. Um, Today I'm going to be talking about the Ken and Barbie killers. Yeah, so this took a place in Canada, not the states this time. Bad stuff happens in Canada? Yes, bad stuff mm. happens I didn't know that. Everywhere. I thought Canada was like this utopia. Yeah, mount, Mounties and syrup. That's all <laughs> and, I mean. and normal people. Yeah. I wish. Yeah. But no, this actually, this was, um, I don't know. So I watched um, a briefing about this case a while back with my mom because she's a big crime junkie. I think yeah. it was on ID Investigation, but it was one of those channels. And it was kind of, uh, not eerily similar, but it's just the fact that it took place within a family as well. And it was an older sister committing crimes with um, her husband. And it was really creepy because they did some nasty stuff to their younger siblings. And I just, for me, it was super unbelievable. I could, wow. I could not imagine. So like, how did these two geniuses meet? So, okay. So it starts off with Carla Homolka. So we have Carla Homolka and then Paul Bernardo. So those are, that's the Ken and Barbie killers. Okay. Um, Carla, she was, you know, kind of, I guess small town girl in I believe Scarborough or no St. Catherine, okay. uh, Canada, Ontario, Canada. Their right things are weird. The but provinces, yeah, provinces. Um, and she grew up, you know, kind of normal life. Uh, everyone said she was like a lovely girl, smart. She was, you know, popular in school to an extent. Boys liked her, so it seemed like she had a pretty normal upbringing. So she had a normal childhood, and what was his like? So Paul, he's, his was a little um, off. So growing up, it was said that his mom was kind of very verbally abusive to him. And then I guess maybe in passing, um, when she was verbally abusing him, um, that somehow he found out his father that he grew up with was not actually his biological father. And I guess that was something that really stuck with him. Um, and then around that time, so I believe he was around 16 at that age, he started... Uh, peeping at like women's windows like a peeping tom yeah peeping peeping paul actually so peeping he's a, paul the peeping paul wow so he was peeping at women's like as they're like undressing in their windows and all that stuff and i guess yeah. he continued to do that and you know funny thing with this case not really funny it's like terrible thing so him and carla met at like some type of pet convention she worked at a pet food store place okay and she went to a convention i guess he was there he was in college at the time around the age of 23 and she was only 17 but after the convention after she did her stuff she went to out like uh food with her friend and he walked into the restaurant and they made eye contact and i guess it was like love at first sight or something like that and you know they kind of kicked it off did he have siblings or a dad or was it just him and his mom the youngest of three okay um were they all treated the same way or just him I'm not sure exactly, to be honest. I it was thought the youngest was always accounts. babied. Yeah. Definitely. Right? And I the would oldest say. one usually gets, you know, the bastard child. Yeah, I would I would normally say that, but I guess it was I know, because I'm the oldest one. <laughs> I'm the yeah. oldest too. I get shit on My yeah. sister, yeah, is yeah, I've heard the same of way. middle child syndrome. Mi- yeah, so, the middle yeah. doesn't get, yeah, gets yeah. both sides. You don't get to try everything new like right. the oldest, mm-hmm. and then you're not babied Baby like, like the youngest. Yeah. Oh, my sisters, but <laughs> <laughs> they definitely fit each description. But um, yeah, so uh, according to everyone that like met him, knew him, he was a pretty charming young man. They thought he was attractive, nice, good looking, bright future ahead of him. Same kind of same ideals as Carla. Um, but his troublehood, I guess, was more troubling. His childhood was more troubling and he was a peeping Paul. Um, and then they met the convention, hooked up and all that stuff like took off. And so at that time in the area around his college, it was noted that there was a serial rapist. So first it started with like groping women um, and he would like come up behind. Uh, no one, they obviously, because he came up from behind, it was hard for women to identify him. And women would get grabbed. And, and this then- was happening on campus? I don't believe it was on campus. It was in the like surrounding area of Scarborough. Of his campus though. Yeah, like same okay. area where he's at. So okay. Scarborough. So the area. word was out, there's a serial rapist out. Mm-hmm. So this is around the time he's courting Carla as well. Got it. So there's a serial rapist in the area where he was currently living. And he was groping women and then eventually like they didn't catch him after a year, you know, victims are adding up and then it started becoming more violent. One inch. 
Houston. Yeah, so I have my dog here at the office today. Her name is Cinnamon. <laughs> she's a little Chewini, and she's she's going to be walking around, so you might hear little pitter patter footsteps. What what is a Chewini? A Chewini is a Chihuahua and a Dachshund. Oh, yeah. So that's why she's so tiny. Wow. But she's still very long. You want to yes, lay down? Is. Come on, get back in your bed. Come on. She's like getting curious. And she's probably a train killer, right? Oh, yes, definitely. Yeah. She will <laughs> bite vicious. the shit out of your ankles. Yeah, right on. <laughs> Those are the ones I worry about. Yeah, even without front teeth. Yeah. Yeah. But anyways, so during that time, he there was like a serial rapist and everything, and they were trying to get more of a description of him. It was kind of hard because, again, he was attacking women from behind, and then, you know, the rapes became more violent as time came How on. many are we talking about here um, in terms of rapes? Upwards. Like two, three, 20. There's three plus. Okay, three plus. I Under 10. I don't have the exact number, but okay. there's a ton that he was just attacking women. Okay, and this was enough to say it's they're all being attacked from behind, so there's a pattern here, and we believe it's the same guy. Yes, so okay. this was enough for where they're like, we're looking for one person, and they were doing a lot of news broadcasting, so it was enough to where they're doing like PSAs, like, hey, everyone, be careful, don't go out at night, make sure door's locked, yada, 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 there's someone coming out. Mm -hmm. Was he a usual suspect because he was already convicted for peeping Tom, uh, being a peeping Tom? And so technically he wasn't convicted for peeping. So this okay. was just something noted further along the line after. He oh, got so he never got caught not for, for peeping. The, not for the peeping, I believe. Okay. But for the rape. So this is kind of where it's I feel it's like all... it starts that way always. Mm -hmm. Peeping. It, yeah, it does. Uh, and then um, what's the, the guys that drive around and then pull next to a girl to ask for directions and they're masturbating? Is that similar genre as Peeping Toms? Is I it like feel the same? like it has to be. That Either way, it's me gross. in college. Really? Yeah. I was walking to class with my friends hmm. and this guy pulled over and I was probably the worst target he could have done that to. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest, okay? Mm -hmm. So he pulls over and he's like, hey, and he's purposely talking very low. And in other words, so I have to go closer. Mm -hmm. Hey, where's, you know, whatever building on campus and i'm like what and i walk closer and he has no pants on and he's masturbating Ew. and i was like you know most women are going to be startled and not me i was like i wouldn't go around showing people that <laughs> <laughs> and he just guns it like and just you know and then when he went off he had purposely covered his license plate so uh, he's driving around with the intent of doing, doing that. Gotcha. Ew, but that's nasty. we had a good laugh about it, um, my friends and I. <laughs> but anyway, not to digress, but it seems like this is, these are patterns. I think so. Yeah. It's just men. Sorry, One, Steve. <laughs> no, you're fine. But I'm, I'm guessing there's a different a levels or stages of voyeurism that lead you into right. now mm -hmm. you have to physically touch whatever you're watching. Yeah. Right. Because that's what happened with the rapes. They It was like more groping at first. And then it started getting, as time went on, more serious by the day. So, but, so they ended up, the one description a lot of the women could get of him is that he had like, like color hair. He was tall and that kind of stuff. And then okay. eventually as time went on, and I guess maybe he slipped up a little bit, they got more of an actu accurate depiction of him. And so they did release like a sketch of him okay um and it did look very similar to paul oh. which carla was dating at the time oh, damn. which pa carla Ca was dating yeah carla was dating paul at the time and the sketch was kind of similar but i guess no one so really she did. saw the sketch i believe she did no one really thought wow. anything of it the okay. family didn't either the family was like going goo goo gaga over yeah. him they're like we love paul he's great wonderful love him mm -hmm. he's totally a ken doll yeah totally yeah. Uh -huh. um and they just no one thought anything of it. His friends was like, hey, that kind of looks like Paul and that kind of stuff. And then I think eventually police caught when like, this Paul dude kind of looks like it. Can Holy shit, you never want that to happen. Mm -hmm. All your friends and family going, you kind of look like the serial rapist. I know, isn't that like- Like I'd be shitting my pants. Yeah. First of all, if it was not a good, you know, yeah, wasn't me. I freak out. I'd be like, yeah. you guys think I'm a rapist? Well, they were gonna. He. So they were like, hey, dude, can you submit DNA? We're like, we need. We wanted like. Oh, DNA so test. somebody said, hey, yeah. I know this guy Paul. Do you know who ratted him out? No, I don't. Okay. So I believe there was someone along the lines that did. Okay. Um, but the police were like, hey, dude, like you know, you look very eerily similar to the sketch or in the yeah. area. Can we get your DNA test? So they ended up doing that. But he said yes? Yes, he did. So I guess he was he didn't have <laughs> anything to hide. But the thing is, the test never got really, they never looked at it. 
So it took a while for them to kind of test it, match the DNA, all that stuff. Like how long's a while? Um, well, enough time for them to kill, well, for him to get married, engaged, married. And oh, like kill so all this more happened. Victims. Oh yes. my God. So it wasn't even like he got caught, arrested, let go. And then he like, So he should have been on the streets stuff. in the first place. Mm -hmm. So they never tested the DNA. So he thinks I'm scot-free. Yes. Okay. Moves. And so he proposes to Carla, you know, they're recording, whatever. They didn't think it was a killer or anything or rapist or right. whatever. Um, and they end up moving in together with, into their parents' house. So now we went from Scarborough to, I believe. Into her parents or his? Her parents. Okay. To St. Catharines. Um, okay. Ontario, Ontario, Canada. Yeah. Hope. Um, but so they moved in and subsequently all the rapes stopped in that area. Whoa. Mystical. Like, wow. Right. He moves away and the and yep. goes mm -hmm. down. Yep. Yeah. So not really mind blowing because obviously it was him doing it. So then, so he moves in, he's living with the family now at this point and his, um, he, so she has two younger siblings. Okay. Um, I believe one was around the same age as her when you're younger. So her name was Lori, who was born like a year later than her. Okay. And then, so that's the middle child. And then Tammy, who was, I believe, four to five years younger than okay. her. So she was a lot younger. So they were like one in high school and one in middle school? Yeah. Okay. Almost. So she had two younger sisters and then, you know, they moved in. So I guess the youngest, Tammy, like really adored her older brother. She was like, he's, you know, like a great, almost like a brother figure in her life. And, you know, they... It was three siblings. So that's kind of how my siblings look up to my boyfriend as well. They uh, really enjoy him. He's right. really nice, blah, 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 blah. Um, and I guess he becomes really infatuated with the younger sibling, Paul. Yeah, I know. And he tells Carla, there's something you can't give me, and that's being a virgin. And he was like, I want Tammy, Carla. Tammy's um, virginity. Yeah. What? For Christmas that, that at that. definitely taken imagine? over that big... That big brother line, you kind of stepped way over it. Yeah. I feel like there had to be some type of other odd conversations between them rather than, hey, you know what I want for my birthday? Your sister. Yeah. There like, had to have been. That just is not even a normal sequence in a mm -hmm. conversation. I think what kind of led up to it, so I don't know, if, I'm pretty sure this was before he um, said, it was like, oh, like I want your sister's virginity for Christmas, was he was like peeping in her window at night, watching her get changed as well. And then like masturbating in her room while she slept. The younger oh, sibling. Oh, sweet and Jesus. She, and he was caught by the sister. The younger sister? No. 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 I guess none of the family or the younger sibling suspected anything. Damn, he's quiet. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, the way the older sister Carla could just like go along with this, I guess she was so infatuated by him that like, she had to do this, but to me, that's like utterly disgusting. So I don't... she said, yeah, that's great. Like, in other words, I'll talk to her. So Carla aided in this plan because she worked at a vet and obviously at vet they have pills and stuff to sedate animals. Oh. So she took pills and then she also took halothane, which was an anesthetic. And she crushed the pills up in her sister's food. So the parents went to bed oh late at night. God. They're like, come on, little sis, we're going to drink and stuff. Yeah. And, you know, she's like a little underage. Yeah. Well, not a little. She's she like thinks, 14, oh, this 15. is cool. I get to hang out with my older yeah, sister. Yeah, try to and tag along mm -hmm. and hang out. I'm cool now. Yep. Yep. Um, and then she they falls asleep. drug her. Yes. And then they take a cloth soaked in the halothane and kind of just put it over her mouth. So at this point, he oh. is raping the younger sibling, and the idiots thought it was cool to videotape it. So you know, I in know. front of the sister who videotaped it. Yes. Oh my god. So the sister, si sister, I believe, is videotaping as Paul is raping. Oh my um, god, her little sister. Yeah, little sister, which is, yeah. Um, and then after he's done, he's like, "Okay, Carla, your turn." Yeah. What did Carla do? Rape her sister. Gross. I what know. does that mean? Yeah, so so they are raping her, and the poor sister is out. Tammy, she yeah is completely out of yeah. it. Vomits, chokes on her vomit, and dies. <gasps> so oh they, my so God. she's choking on vomit. They are like freaking out, like oh shit! Called nine one one. Is that because the cloth was on her mouth? I think the cloth obviously was too much, and then probably her body was. Or going they gave her shock, too much. The pills, the you know. Thing, okay, yeah. so when you go pre-surgery, you're supposed to go on an empty stomach. Oh, yeah. That's she just ate. said that she gave the anesthetic with food. Mm. The reason they tell you not to eat is because it pr it'll it'll make you vomit and you can choke on yourself. Gotcha. So that was a recipe for disaster right off the bat. Yeah. 
So she vomited, was choking on it. They called 911. Um, obviously, 911 took her to the hospital, all that stuff, but she ended up dying. But what oh happened was before God. that, you know, they're hiding everything. They mm-hmm. dressed her, all that stuff, cleaning up things. And then the hospital was like, ah, she has like chemical burns on her face. And they're like, nah, nah, that's rug burn. Like we were all drinking. We were having fun. I think maybe we drank a little too much and we passed out and she like vomited and choked out and vomit. And, you know, we but were yeah, trying to save her. she had no her. alcohol in her system. Yeah. So, yeah. Trying uh-huh. to save her. I think they did give her a little oh. bit. But obviously not enough to like completely put her out and for her to talk about They probably gave her too much anesthetic. Well, yeah, is what it seems like. My other like. thing is what about like her virginity? The doctor can tell. That, that she, too. Did they not? I guess because maybe she was clothed and everything. Yeah, they didn't. They probably so they dressed her back up. Before. Yeah, they dressed her back up. They they covered up everything. And I guess because maybe she was dressed, they didn't think. I got it you know, check down there, make sure anything's all right. But also, you know, it was a family thing. They're like, we were drinking. Like, I think first case scenario, you're not going to think, oh, no. she was Yeah, the family's right. take yeah. victimizing her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So they got away with it because they're like, it's it's rug burn on her face. We dragged her off the bed and, you know, her face kind of, you know, pulled on the carpet as we were trying to save her. Jesus. And the parents bought this too. Yeah. And so obviously they were grieving as a parent should do you know if your mm-hmm. youngest daughter How did the dies the oldest daughter feel about what she did I, like was there any guilt with this see that's the weirdest thing so according to her testimony so after you know because they ended up doing this to two other girls so after they got caught um and put to trial and everything they ended up pitting against each other oh, so okay. she took a plea deal and she was like like I was being verbally abused, which she did know earlier on in their relationship, like when they were getting more infatuated with each other, he would be kind of mean and rude to her, but then he would show up with a gift and everything's all right, you know, things are good. But she did know that he was like verbally abusing her. She didn't intend to do any of this. He forced her to do it and it was mainly him doing the killings. Like they were supposed to be letting the girls go free and all that kind of stuff. So that's what she said, took a plea deal and obviously got a shorter amount of time. So, okay, go ahead. I was going to say, that's probably how Paul was taught and programmed for love. I mean, his mom was doing that to him and you said abusing, break, right. verbally abusing and then, hey, I'm going to treat you bad, but here's a gift. So, you know, I do still love you, but this is the way I express my love to you type right. of thing. Mm-hmm. So how did they find their second victim? So the second victim, so they ended up moving out the home um, and he, this is a few weeks before they were supposed to wed or have their wedding. I'm not, I think they were... Yeah, so a few weeks before their wedding. And I guess he was driving along and he saw a girl. Um, she was 15 years old and it was night. She stayed past her curfew by accident because she had a wake for a friend. And she was locked out of her house and he saw her and he was like, hi. And she was like, hi, do you have any cigarettes? And he was like, yeah, they're in my car. Come on. And mm. went to the car, blindfolded her, shoved her in the car and called his wife. And was like, I got a present for you. Oh, so now we just added a, a third oh, peep. Yeah. Peeping Paul the pedophile. Yeah, yeah. Peeping Paul the pedophile. <laughs> yeah, so he brings her home um, and they, you know, make her drink a ton of alcohol, give her drugs, that kind of stuff. And they rape, sodomize her, everything while she's blindfolded. And, you know, again, they recorded it. So this is, you know, God. a lot of people have a ritual. So another mm-hmm. one of theirs is recording, which is really stupid because evidence. A lot of pedophiles do that, though. Yeah. And then they share re- it want to relive it or share it and stuff Mm -hmm. yep so um they're recording it everything blah 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 uh poor girl she was like my blindfold's coming off as in like look guys i'm gonna see who you are like stop help me someone something and it eventually did and then they ended up killing her so they i don't know if the autopsies exactly proved how she was killed because it's two different things um one of them bernardo said that carla was the one that killed her and she did it via drugs or she was going to put like an air bubble in her veins and like kill her. That, yeah. And then Carla oh. said that Bernardo strangled her. Either way, she did die. And they left her for a day in their basement. And the Homolka family came over and had dinner at their house with the girl dead in the race. Holy crap. Holy cow. So what was the plan to get rid of the body? So they ended up cutting her up. And putting her in cement blocks and then disposing her in a lake. That's a lot of work. It is. So, so much so that they ended up having a 200 pound block and they couldn't I was obviously say. throw it in the lake. So they left it off the shore 
and then someone found Wait, it. Wait, let me make sure I'm understanding this correctly. So they're taking some type of saw in the basement mm-hmm. and cutting her into pieces. Mm-hmm. Then they're creating concrete mold mm-hmm. in probably five gallon buckets and dumping parts in, mm-hmm. waiting till it hardens, mm-hmm. and then trying to carry it out to the lake. To sink it, yeah, and to dump it. That is a ton of work. I know. That's why they left stuff offshore and people are like, what the hell is this? But when people saw it offshore, they probably thought, that's a big piece of concrete. I think so. I think maybe there was some identifying fact because they were able to recover that concrete piece and they they were able to match it to the victim. So they're like, oh no, like she died. There's a foot in that piece of concrete block. I can see it. Well, if you can see it, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But like if you can't, what would make somebody chip away a concrete block. You probably just think it's yeah. thrown away from a construction company or something. Yeah. Yeah. Someone trying to clean the shore right. and was like, hey, I need to move this. And it's and, too heavy for yeah, me. And so they start breaking it up into manageable pieces. There you go. And that's how they... So I mean, was this an immediate catch or there was time in between? So there was a little more time because they okay. had one last victim. Um, and unfortunately, what happened with this one was they were, again, patrolling. So it was around the time school gets let out. And they're like, oh, families, or not families, but like children. Right. Get out of school. They had an yeah. appetite for little girls is what it seemed like. Um, and they saw, they parked in like a parking lot. One girl was like walking on her way home from school. And Carla got out the car and was like, ah, I'm lost. And, you know, this is something my mom says too, like, no adult will ever ask a child for directions. No. So just like an FYI for exactly. any one younger, like moms, make sure you let your kids know that because that's a yeah. big thing. Yeah. And she was like, oh, I'm lost. And then, you know, snatched her up, put her in the car. How old was this girl? She was 15. And so they brought her home and, you know, same thing, sodomized, raped her, all that. In their house? Yes. Okay. And, ooh, my voice cracked. Um, and But this one was reported immediately because... Her parents are like, she has a set routine. She gets she home at this time. never came home from school. Yeah. yeah, and never came home from school. And so they so were- So it was like this big missing person thing. Mm-hmm. Okay. So they were searching for her, trying to figure out where she's at. They found right. her shoe in that parking lot. Oh. Mm. Yeah. So they knew she'd been taken. Yeah. So they okay. knew there's foul play involved and she's been abducted. Right. So this is kind of led to where they got caught. This is like a parent's worst nightmare. Yeah. But it speaks exactly. very important to having those routines and letting your mm-hmm. kids know, hey, I need you to follow this process if I'm not going to be there with you. Mm-hmm. That way, if yeah. there is any deviation to it, I immediately need to check on it. Yeah. Exactly. It's just so scary. Just thinking about it is I know, and it's mind boggling. It's, yeah. It's really, especially to now, like sex trafficking is like an yeah. all time high. It's just very, it's a very scary thing. Sometimes for me, it's like, I don't want to put children in the world if I'm yes. going to have to worry about yeah. all these things happening to them. It's very real. Uh, I'll, it's definitely something you talk about. You know, I have a 15 year old son and, you know, he walks home from high school and it's only it's only a half mile. But I think about it every single day. Mm-hmm. And if he doesn't text me, I'm asking right. what's going mm-hmm. on. Why aren't why didn't you text me? Let me know you're inside the house. Right. And everything. I mean, 15 years old, he still forgets. Yeah. Dad, I stayed late for uh, wrestling practice that yeah. I didn't tell you about. OK, but that's why you yeah, are. Let me know. Uh, you're, so. I'm calling you and I'm, yeah. I'm getting on your case because. I'm expecting you to walk home and you didn't text me. Somebody yeah. may have picked you up mm-hmm. and I can't give them any time to do anything. I, I feel I like know. we should implant GPS devices in our kids. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. So that way we always know where they're at. You know, That would be nice. Mm. Well, you know, like air tags and stuff, but yeah. that's kind of scary too. So like you could theoretically like put on their backpack and everything yeah, and be able to track they them. They toss the backpack and take the kid. Yeah, and, like where, where can you put an air tag? I, I don't know. I'm thinking right in the neck here. <laughs> <laughs> I saw some, one where they're cutting out the sole of the shoe and pu- and putting it into the air. That's there, oh, wow. And then putting the um That's the, the sole back in there so either the kid doesn't know nothing. That's pretty brilliant mm-hmm. except if you have 20 pairs of shoes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 20 air tags. Yeah, 20 air tags. <laughs> but anyway, we digress. Yes. So this poor little girl so they ended was up raped, sodomized, and I'm assuming killed in the same manner. Okay. So again, this was the same thing. So they're pitting against against each other. Um, well, Carla's, after the facts, we really yeah. don't know. Carla said he, he strangled did. him, mm-hmm. her, and then Bernardo said he hit her in the head with a mallet. Yeah. Mm. So was she cut up? So they ended up throwing her body in a ditch, and then it was found um, when her hair was cut off, and then her body was completely cleaned. That was the last victim. And they said, like, the hair was cut off, like, to kind of impede identification, throw them off. 
obviously didn't work. Um, but like during this time afterwards, so they're, you know, looking for the killers right now. So Bernardo was questioned in regards to the Scarborough rapist. So we're going kind of back oh to God. that. Part. So he's being questioned. So this is probably two different police departments. Yes. Scarborough is where the rapes took place. Mm -hmm. And the new town is. Uh, uh, so it's St. Catharines. Right. So. Probably completely different police departments. And I'm guessing, what year did this take place? So this took place in the 90s. Okay. So, so we don't know if they're even sharing information. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. I mean, there was DNA then that yeah. you could run. but And he submitted it, so it's on file. But they never ran it when to did, begin with. I mean, when did the United States have a national database? I know this is in Canada, but... I think it was in the 80s for DNA. Gotcha. Uh, the problem but, is, is there's so much crime mm -hmm. that it'll take them years just to catch up to a rape that happens today. Gotcha. So he's dealing with the latest crime that he did, right? And then Scarborough PD comes in and says, oh, we finally ran the DNA and you're a match? Or is it, we want to talk to you? So we want to talk to you. Okay. Um, so they were like, let's, we need to talk to him, get some questions, blah, blah, blah. Then... So they're like, I think the two, the last two victims that they killed are connected. So they opened up like an investigation. So they're like investigating maybe who could have killed. Is this directly connected with each gotcha. other? All that stuff. So while they're doing that, they're, the other police department is running the DNA now finally. And on the child on that they found? On Bernardo. Oh, on the, Bernardo. So the okay. old right. DNA that he gave to them, he okay. submitted. So now it's going in the database. Yeah. So they're finally testing it. And then... This was like maybe a few days later. Bernardo beats the crap out of Homolka, so Carla. Which, what the hell? As he's been, as told, he's been kind of verbally abusive to her, that kind of stuff. But so this was the first time he actually beat her. I don't know if it was the first time he actually okay. beat her, but I believe it was the first time it was documented because she ended up getting beat so bad she ended up leaving, running, and going to the hospital um, because she was beat with a flashlight on the limbs, oh head, my God. and face. And then a According to her, she said she was in a automobile accident um, and returned to work. But her co-workers were like, eh, I don't buy the story and called her parents. I wonder if he had so much anxiety yeah. about both these dual cases starting to come to a, a head. And he's like, my only way to vent my frustration is. Or did she threaten to out him? Who knows? Well, yeah, maybe they know. were arguing yeah. about, no, um, you're going to take the fall. No, you're going to take the fall. Or we, we can't do this anymore. And yeah. he's like, yeah, we can. So. Co-workers like, eh, this yeah. is fishy. Call the parents. Parents are like, no, you need to go to the hospital. The hospital was like, oh, she was battered by her spouse. And then the parents are like, we're going to file charges against Bernardo. Okay. So during this time, um, you know, they ran the DNA test and I believe they found a match. And okay. So Bernardo's now under like 24 hour watch right now. And that is where. Well, I did he get arrested for the beating of her while they Not figured out the yet, DNA was because a Because I believe they're in the process of pressing charges. Jesus. So all this has happened simultaneously. Yes. This is all kind of, all this is kind of coming to head at once. So this was 26 months after he submitted his DNA oh, test. Oh, good God. Yeah. So well, this is all relatively. I mean. They are far other. behind. And there has to be something that finally made them say, hey, we we get there. I mean, you're saying it's 24, 26 months, but they they came to Paul before the, the, the DNA was ran and said, we still. Just so you know, this is still active, yeah. and you are a prime candidate for right. being the suspect for this. So right. So that I and mean, then he's dealing with well, he. It sounds like his biggest mistake was beating up his wife. Yeah. Because the co things your are going to conspirator, go, and, and she's going to rat you now. Yeah. Wow. Because they're mm -hmm. the parents are probably like, you know, what's going on yeah. in the household that he <laughs> wants to beat you, and she's. I mean, most parents have a good way to. Get, gra yeah. gather information from the kids that most people, right. strangers don't. Right. So probably getting this information drawn out I from agree. them. It's just a weird dynamic. Yeah. yeah. So, so all what this, happened then? All this stuff is going down and um, the police are like kind of working on pressing the charges and then he's also under watch for being possibly mm -hmm. the, rapist. the rapist. And so Homoka is like breaking down too because obviously she's, you know, she did get beat, but she's also kind of scared because she was an active participant in these murders. Yeah, so Barbie, she, buck up. So she ended up fessing up. Aunt's Aubrey were like, oh, shit, like. Right. Because all this is happening. Right. And then, um, so they take her, so she gets, you know, lawyers up and everything. Right. And she's also placed under watch because they obviously have to report this to the police. 
So then, despite telling her her their suspicions about Bernardo, Homoka concentrated on his abuse of her later that night. So this is after she was being questioned by police because of all this. And then later that night, um, she told her aunt that her husband, her aunt and uncle, that her husband was a Scarborough rapist, that they were involved in the rapes and murders of Leslie Mahaffey and Kristen French, which were the two victims, and the rapes were recorded on videotape. And so with that, they ended up recording reopening the investigation of her younger sister's death as well. So she ended up lawyering up, um, Homoka did, and she wanted full immunity. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, of mm. course you do. So she went out also on like a 24-hour watch Please tell well. me they did not give her immunity. Mm. So she wanted full immunity, ended up, you know, she took a plea bargain. Which so, was what? So she ended up, she... <laughs> Let's make sure exactly the verbiage of what happened. But she ended up getting a plea bargain, which states. I think, I mean, I don't understand how you would give a plea bargain to <sighs> a sister who killed her own sister. I don't understand why they do it every day. Gave up your sister yeah. to, to this, this monster that you know is there. Exactly. But at the time, they weren't aware of the videotape, so they don't know how act they didn't they weren't aware of how actively she was involved. It was uh, do you think they should have investigated that before they I, just gave her some type a of lot deal? Of, well, when the videotapes were released, the public was in, outraged. Yeah, I'm they sure. were in a frenzy because they're somebody like, lost their job at attorney general. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So she ended up so Bernardo, he was convicted of the two teen teenagers murders and received life in prison and a dangerous offender designation, the full maximum sentence allowed in Canada. Um, and then because of her abuse and all that stuff, and then she ended up taking the plea bargain, she was um, reduced to a prison sentence of 12 years in exchange for a guilty plea of manslaughter. Wait a minute. So you said Paul was convicted of two murders, not three? Not the sisters, no. But what? it was later, I guess, ended up later speculating like, oh, he like they ended up doing it. But he got convicted of that and she was convicted what of manslaughter. What about all the rapes? So he gets life in prison and she got 12 years. Yeah. And is she out now? Oh, yeah. So she was released in 2005. Um, she ended up settling down and having three kids, and she's moved numerous times. I right bet. now, as of 2020, the last, like, people heard. So she ended up, um, I don't know, if she, I don't think she's living with her husband or children anymore, and she's, like, somewhere floating around in Canada. Well, I, I can understand her moving around because I, it, me and I find out you're my neighbor. Yeah, yeah. there's going to be a little bit of an issue. Oh, yeah. There was a lot of different problems she was having. Like her. But somebody married her and she had yeah. three more kids. And she's changed her name a few times. Too, uh, yeah, well. I bet. Yeah. yeah. And the, probably the news just keeps outing her. Yep. Mm -hmm. And they're like the school board will figure out who she is. And they're like, we don't want her son or her to go there. But like every whack job in the world, she will move to Florida. <laughs> 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 and eat someone's face yep. on the interstate in Miami. Who knows, man? But Next Florida woman story. Yeah, definitely she's a person that I don't think well, I don't, should be. You know, I'm, I'm not free. familiar with Canadian laws, but this sounds some bull to me. Yeah, I agree. So one of the things that really stands out to me in this is, like I said, I think it's more heinous of a crime to give your sibling up to a monster than just yeah. being uh, an act of randomness yeah. from one person, even though he kind of knew her through that relationship, but you're supposed to love your sister and you gave her up knowing that what type of person he is. You might have not known to the full extent, but yeah. you knew that he was marching down this path. Mm -hmm. That was one of the most disgusting things that I ever encountered as a cop was um, drug addicted mothers that were selling their daughters. Uh, to anyone and everyone for drugs. Mm. And uh, they would watch it. These rapes happen. And I mean, these were six, seven, eight year old girls mm. that this was happening to. And that was the most disgusting, revolting thing that I've ever seen before. Now, are the punishments harsher for that than the actual drug crime? Yeah, drug crime typically doesn't get. Um, near as much because they look at it as victimless mm -hmm. but um yeah the rapes and then obviously she loses custody but you know that child will never be the same yeah what is that what is that crime considered because i mean you're almost forcing your child into some sort of prostitution yeah. mm -hmm. it's rape it's still rape I mean, mm -hmm. these are grown men and that's a yeah. six seven year old girl yeah, but for the mother like what's, oh, oh, what oh what type mother. she's like a pimp okay yeah so it, and a drug addict and you know, uh, it's just horrible, horrible. So, 
seen it before and that was crazy. So, yeah. um, yeah, I'm just sad that she's out, uh, free. Me too. Running as a free person after, you know, she killed three people. It doesn't sound like there's, uh, a lot of, uh, retribution for her, but thanks for sharing the, uh, Barbie and Ken. So next time I see a Ken doll and a Barbie doll, that's probably what I'll end up thinking about. <laughs> but anyway, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this case. I had not heard fr of it before. If you're in Canada, you might have heard of it. But thank you for watching today. Don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell for notifications. And don't forget to follow us on TikTok and Instagram at, at Crime Scene Cleaning. Have a great day.